Hey guys, Dylan here uh, with Game Talk for this week. And this week we are going to be talking about how to create memorable NPCs for your tabletop or LARP game when you're in the Game Master's chair. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys five tips, uh, five methods that I like to use to help take NPCs and kind of embed them into the consciousness uh, of your players. You, you don't want your NPCs to become these kind of faceless mechanisms of plot distribution you don't want them to feel like they're just kind of a systemic function of the world. You want them to feel like they're people. You want them to feel like they're participants, that they're other beings in the world that are conscious and, and, and are people and, and have detail and depth to them, just like the player characters. Uh, so I'm going to give you these five tips and hopefully these help you make your NPCs a bit more memorable in the future. Uh, so my first and easiest tip is a silly voice. It doesn't necessarily have to be silly, but it has to be a, a voice that is notably different to, to the one that you normally use. So your normal voice is going to be associated with your real life position as the game master. It's your narrator's voice. It's the, the voice that they associate with being kind of an out of play value. Um, what you want to do is when you want an NPC to be remembered, you need to modulate your voice in some way, shape or form. Um, for example, I've got an NPC uh, and a boffer LARP that I run uh, and he talks like this, except that he cusses a whole fucking lot and is very vulgar and likes to freestyle rap at people. And that immediately embedded the character into their memories. The moment they hear that voice, they think, all right, that's a blue wizard. He's that crazy old man who's also a hacker and likes to freestyle rap at people. Or if they hear Blue Wizard, because that was so memorable, they immediately uh, remember that in reverse as well. The voice calls to mind the character, the character calls to mind the voice, and you create a link. Uh, now, not every voice has to be as significant as that one. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do. You can lower your register to sound a bit more serious or masculine or, or, or experienced. You can raise your voice in order to sound more naive or feminine or inexperienced, not to associate those values together just that that's what people think when they hear those voices in context that can be used differently. Don't don't misconstrue me. I'm not saying women suck. You can speak a lot faster to indicate a lack of confidence because people who are speaking quickly are usually very nervous. And if you want to make a character seem like they're kind of nervous, you can just speak really quickly and don't take a lot of breaths in between their sentences. And it makes the characters sound like what they are. Or you can speak slowly, which makes the character sound ancient or mysterious. You can do small things like that and you can make your NPCs much more memorable by just introducing that small bit of flair uh, to their personality. All right. So tip number two is use a prop or a costume. Use a physical item that is associated with the character. Um, this can be a hat. This can be a, a sword prop if you're playing a boffer game or a parlor game that allows physical representations of weapons or even just a tabletop game. If you have swords, because swords are fucking sweet, right? Uh, it can be uh, this is my personal favorite, a long coat. Uh, coats really take up a lot of the physical body. Uh, of the person portraying the character and so make it very easy to associate that coat with that character uh, even if it's the only thing that you have. Now the beauty about this strategy is that it's very useful uh, specifically in LARP when you uh, have a, a world or a culture or a group of people who all dress very similarly or very mundanely. Uh, say for example you have a peasant and they need to look like a peasant but you also want them to be differentiated. You can give them like this really like unique looking straw hat. They still look like a peasant, but they have this prop that's like, oh, no, 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 that's that's Johnny P, not just peasant number 367. Right. Um, you can have uh, maybe there are soldiers and soldiers have a standard look in this universe. But this soldier uses a very specific weird weapon or he has a helmet or he has a necklace from his lover or whatever. It only takes one item that kind of adds the layer on top of the base identity of the character in order to, to take them from being kind of generic to being very memorable. Um, you can do this even in tabletop, by the way. Don't think this is only a LARP trick. I actually had a GM in college who had a stack of hats and he would take a hat and he would put a different hat on for every NPC and he would start matching the NPCs to these different like kind of ridiculous like $2, you know, thrift store costume hats. But it worked. Like when he put a hat on, we were immediately like, ah, yeah, I know who that guy is, even if he didn't Changes voice. Uh, so this can obviously supplement any other strategy or be a standalone. 
Uh, so my third tip for you is to do some sort of a, a tick, some sort of a nervous habit. So if you have a character that maybe does this, people will recognize, oh yeah, that's that guy that's always kind of scratching at his neck. And they might, you know, start rumors about it. They might make assumptions about it. Maybe, maybe you're a character that's always kind of like adjusting your glasses when you talk. That can give them kind of a scholastic look. Maybe, maybe you, maybe you, you, you have a stutter and that can kind of indicate that the character has a, a more troubled background or perhaps that they're just not very confident. Um, any sort of vocal or physical tick like that can kind of evoke a certain sense that can be associated with the character. Now, this follows kind of a theme, which you've probably picked up on by now, uh, which is that you you take the generic bedrock of a character and you kind of add an element, and it's that added element that makes the character extremely memorable. It's very easy to portray a generic character. It's very easy to transform a generic character into a memorable character by adding one of these technical things. Obviously, if you add more, they become more memorable, but adding even one of these can make the character really stand out. Um, um, so my fourth one moves a little bit more into kind of combining mechanics and story, which is something I'm a big fan of, to be honest with you. Giving a, a character a small, unique special ability can help the, the, the players remember that character. Um, say, for example, you're playing a Dungeons and Dragons campaign uh, and you meet a cleric, uh, say a cleric of the God of Knowledge. And this cleric has this minor extra special ability that's not like part of being a cleric where he can remember anything he's ever read with flawless accuracy he has eidetic memory for the written word the players are, are going to be fascinated by that they're going to say wow that's interesting that's not something i'm used to it's not something i've quantified and registered as being a part of a certain skill set therefore it's unique and special and this guy is special and now i'm going to remember him in larp this is even easier because in larp you usually have a, a little bit more ability to show versus tell compared to tabletop so you can give a character some minor magical or, or martial ability that isn't normally available to players so for example a priest of a god in a boffer larp might be able to walk up and just put his hand on you and cast a blessing and give you some small buff some extra hit points or some extra damage or whatever um a soldier might be able to perhaps parry arrows with his sword because he's so practiced with it. It doesn't have to be good, even. It doesn't have to be uniquely powerful. It just has to be unique because unique adds texture to the substrate kind of archetype of the character and makes it pop and makes it memorable. And finally, my last suggestion, and this is probably my favorite one and the one that's most effective for creating like big scale memorable characters, uh, is to have an iconic moment that subverts the player's automatic expectations of the character. Uh, so let me give you an example rather than just kind of talking through this one. Uh, you've got a DD and d campaign. You've got your standard kind of four-man band party. you got fighter, rogue, cleric, wizard. doesn't really matter what. Uh, and they are, uh, they've joined with a caravan. They're traveling across the nation to get to another place. And on that caravan with them, there is this annoying arrogant, condescending, simpering, cowardly, incompetent, idiot noble. And that's a that's a very standard archetype, right? The the guy who's way too rich and doesn't know to do that. And he just sucks at everything. Right. So you 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 put that in PC and likely they're just going to kind of wave that off unless he does something to them. Um, but you can subvert that archetype you've established later. So say some bandits attack the caravan. One of the PCs gets injured. They drop. The bandits are rushing forward to attack the animals or attract some children or to attack other non-combatants that are on the caravan. And Totally surprising everybody, this simpering, pathetic fop draws his sword and stands up against this guy and actually accounts for himself well, fights well and, and courageously and sticks up for this other person in a selfless manner. You've now completely shattered their archetypical registration of that NPC in their minds. And now that you've shattered that, when they bring it back together and they kind of reconcile and synthesize the archetype that they had perceived with the actions that they have perceived, when they bring Bring these two things together, it'll create a multi-layered character that they will instantly become attached to, that they will instantly remember. They might not like him, but they'll remember him because that character has now become a person. It's now gained a third dimension by com combining the archetype layer with the subversive layer. And now it's a completely different beast and it's no longer just kind of a throwaway stock standard rubber stamp NPC like they originally perceived it to be. 
Now, you can make them the star of the show during this iconic moment, but I actually recommend against that because that can breed feelings of resentment or it can make them kind of feel like they're just the, the DM superstar or that it's a cut scene. The best way to do this is to have them do something that subverts their archetype, but not by stealing the scene. Something that is just kind of on screen that is part of a greater kind of pan, but it isn't the center of the scene because that is generally bad practice. So yeah, subverting an archetype with some sort of iconic moment is a very easy way to immediately make characters permanently recognize and attach themselves to an NPC. Uh, so yeah, those are my five strategies. And then by my only five strategies, they're just the five I selected for this video. I want to hear how you do it. Tell me down there in the comments, how do you make your NPCs memorable? What do you use? What do you do? Do you do any of the things I've listed or some of those new? Do you do things that aren't on my list? Tell me about them. I want to hear it. Uh, in addition to that, please make sure you remember to like, comment and subscribe. If you enjoy the video, you guys know I hate saying that, but I'm going to say it anyway because I need your help to keep making these. The success of this whole game talk thing is on you. You're more important than I am, to be honest. There's way more of you. There's only one of me. It's just a little old me. But please, like I said, hit that subscribe button, share the video to your friends, you know, give me a comment if you like what I'm saying here. If you disagree with what I'm saying, if you think one of these strategies sucks, I don't care. If you have anything to say, please do say it. Share the video with your friends. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I will see you next Friday for another game talk. See you guys later. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.